Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the pods, moving, and storage studios. It's the Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Dr. John Deloney, Ramsey personality, number one best-selling author, and host of the very popular Ramsey Network's produced Dr. John Deloney Show, where we deal with all kinds of relationship and mental health issues. He's my co-host today as we're taking your questions. Phone number is 888-825-5225. This is where common sense meets reality and life, and it does it every day here. Thanks for joining us. The call's free, and some say the advice is worth exactly what you pay for it. Elizabeth is with us in Dallas. Hi, Elizabeth. Welcome to The Ramsey Show. Hello, how are you? Great. What's up? Hi. So I have a question. I've been with my partner and boyfriend for seven years, and we have two small children together. And I recently brought up the fact that we should get married and actually have one bank account and do everything together. And he says that he doesn't want to do that. But marriage is not. Why? He doesn't want to do marriage. Why? He says because he's already previously been married, and he's just not. he's just not going to do it. Why does he think he's not married now? I'm not sure. He's got all, I'm, he's got I'm everything so having to do with already. marriage right now. So now my next question he is. Gets he gets sick. He gets sick. He wants you to make him chicken soup, right? Yes. Yeah. What, what's the difference in this and marriage? I'm confused. Well, he, well here's, he, says that, he says that he's not interested, that either accept him or what should we do? So, Elizabeth, I, I want you to hear what he's actually telling you. He's telling you he went all in on somebody once and got hurt or broke up with or whatever. And he's looking at you after seven years and two children and saying, you're not worth that. I'd rather um, have my illusion of singleness in my back pocket at all times so that I can preserve my little fragile ego. Meanwhile, play house. And play house with you. And you be my wife, and I'll keep all the equity and everything, and I'll keep all my money, and I'll basically pay you like a live-in nanny, um, but this is all mine. That's what he's telling you. I well, hate that for you. Feel. I'm sorry. I hate that for you. How old are your babies? Um, one is four, and the other is one. <sighs> little boy, little girl, what? Um, it's a one-year-old boy and a four-year-old girl. So at this point, I'm at the point that I don't know what to do. I don't know if I 20 years from now, your daughter is 24 and she asks you this question. What do you tell her? I don't know. Hmm. I'm not going to, I'm not going to be the person that tells you, you got to stay or leave. Because I don't want I don't want you to hang on to this guy said this. That's something. That's a decision you're going to have to own. What I will tell you is I think you are worth going all in on, and I think you're worth having a home that two people want to do life together and create a safe space to raise these two beautiful little babies. You're worth that, but you're going to have to make the grown-up decision on whether you stay and you try to build a life inside of a cocoon um, or you make other decisions. In two I'm, weeks, I'm I'll be... Uh, in two weeks, I'll well. be... Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead, babe. What? I'm, um, I'm mostly more afraid of, like, if I walk away, how would I manage with money? I haven't worked in a while. So that's... I'm going to be truthful. That's exactly what's stopping me now from walking away. And that's a very real fear. I mean, that's a very real fear. The The data suggests that when men and women split up, especially in this situation, his net worth will actually go up and yours will go down for a season. Until you get so pissed off that you become a multimillionaire later. But yeah, that's right. um, but yeah the, uh, uh, so in other words, you can't do this today. It's theory. Because you got babies you have to feed. But you can say, all right, I'm going to plan my escape. And I'm going to get my career tooled up. And I'm going to go get a job. 
and I'm going to start making some serious money. And then I get to make decisions from strength rather than from weakness. Mm-hmm. Get to walk to something, not run from something. And then you can walk in and go, uh, not sure, dude, that I want to marry you. So there's that. And that's what we call an Elizabeth Byrne, right? When you flip the whole <laughs> thing around. <laughs> Mic drop. Yeah. But that comes from strength and you're, 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 um, when you're scared and broke, it keeps you from making decisions. So let's move from scared and broke and then remake the decision. You might make the decision under strength to stay, but you would need to make it from strength rather than from weakness. Is that logical? Yes. So if it takes you a year to start making $40,000 a year, then take that year and go do it. That's fine. I got no plan. I got no problem. In he, Dallas, he, Texas. he ain't going nowhere. <laughs> yeah. And the, you're in Dallas, man. The, there will be people that will hire you. In about 20 seconds. I don't want my kids in daycare. Then marry their mother. Hey, Elizabeth, it's not uncommon in this situation, especially after this long, that this isn't the only thing that this person won't, quote unquote, do. This person's been telling you that your things you think are funny or stupid and the feelings or concerns you have about any number of things are dumb. You can't fill in the blank. And after seven years, after almost a decade of this, you've come to believe that stuff to be true, right? I have my doubts. Yeah. Mm. I don't. I don't either. Because the girl that called here has got more stuff inside of her than she sounds like she does or thinks she does. Now go get it. Get you some. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you. Yeah, really. I mean... Don't forget two old guys believe in you. Yeah, and and uh and you got a four year old daughter watching to see how mama is a warrior princess. Look out, here comes Xena. <laughs> you remember that one? Uh, yeah, but don't make that little weird noise call thing. <laughs> Keep that one to yourself, Elizabeth. Don't do that. Just let that only be in your head. Yeah. That's don't right. don't do that. Yeah. But yeah, it, Dave, it, you bring that up. It, it it's a there's a concern, obviously, which is financial, which is real. That's math. There is no debate about that. And what about my babies? And what you bring up is really important. There is a ringside seat to, oh, this is what a mom and a wife are supposed to just accept as reality. Or I had a ringside seat to watching my mom go from a, a, a live-in boyfriend that told her, dude, I'm not wasting any more energy on you, all the way to a successful business owner. Warrior princess. Running shop. And they got to watch that happen in real time. Yeah. Some of the most uh, powerful people I've met, a single mom raised them. Oh, man. And uh, she was a go-getter, and she wouldn't be denied. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. They, the kids take that work ethic, and then they go become a surgeon or something, and there's no yeah, stopping them. Exactly. It exactly. sets up the next generation. You're setting up the next generation, so spend the next year deciding that and getting ready. I'm sorry you're facing this kiddo. This is The Ramsey Show. Hey folks, you know that sinking feeling when you make an offer on a house you love and then you hear there's another offer? You need the Churchill Mortgage Home Buyer Edge. Super fast pre-approval and a secured interest rate. Plus a $5,000 seller guarantee gives your offer the best chance of being accepted. The Home Buyer Edge from Churchill gives you an advantage over those other guys. Go to churchillmortgage.com today to learn more. Dr. John Deloney, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225. I'm going to go with 32 years of broadcasting experience and go with my gut on something here. I want to continue that conversation. Um, From that last caller? Yeah. The uh, Because the actual data is, and those of you that are old like me, you don't realize this data, but more people now live together 
than are married. Okay. Statistic. I mean, actual human beings are more 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 shacking up, cohabitating, whatever you want to call it, than are married. And what people don't grasp is the data. It's been going on. This has been going on since the you know the 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 love shack of the seventies, and from then on, you know, here we go. And uh, so. What people don't realize is the um, unintended consequences legally, financially, uh, relationally that builds up in these situations. There's books of research on this now, uh, on the actual results. And in the financial arena, as an example, we'll start with that one. The there is a thing called the marriage advantage. You've seen this data. Mm -hmm. And the marriage advantage says uh, that married people live longer. I think that's because your wife drives you crazy to go get a physical. But I don't know exactly what it is, but married people live longer. And their net worth is significantly larger. And their net worth is significantly larger. And their incomes and their career trajectory is significantly higher. Statistically. So that's not like a Dave opinion so you little farts on Tic Tac can just go run off the cliff, all right? But the, the, it, with your little comments. But the facts are, the data says that your net worth, your longevity, and your uh, 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 career track and income all are improved with marriage. It's called the, the, the research piece, the buckets of research are called the marriage advantage in general. There's a whole volume. Also, if you live together prior to getting married, you are statistically four times more likely to get a divorce later. I hadn't heard it being that high. Wow. That's wild. Okay. You know? And so you get, and there's all kinds of other things that come in with the cohabitating pro. Or I'm going to try on these shoes to make sure they fit before we buy them, you know, kind of a thing, right? And so um, there's all kinds of data that shows the disadvantages to that there's all kinds of data that shows the disadvantages to short engagements you get you know you meet someone this weekend and by next weekend you're married statistically you're very unlikely for that marriage to last as compared to someone who has a six-month engagement period average not a two-year or a six-year but a six-month engagement period average after the dating process has begun. Because it takes a little while to figure out, is this a person I want to spend the rest of my life with? Duh. Met him in a bar on Saturday, married on Monday. That's Las Vegas. That's not smart, okay? And so um, it just uh, it, can, it, can it work? Does it work occasionally? Sure. Sure, there's always statistical anomalies. But I'm talking about if you're, if you're 16 or you have a 16-year-old, what would you tell them the best way for them to have their most prosperous quality life is have four or five long island iced teas put all your money on red and find some way to marry before the weekend's over right no one would say that no one would say that right no grandmother ever told her son, her no. granddaughter that right good grief no yeah just, um, just, just, just saddle up at the daiquiri bar and see how this works out you know? <laughs> <laughs> if you marry somebody at the daiquiri bar, I'm just going to go ahead and say that study's probably not been done. That ain't going to last. That ain't going to last. <laughs> That's a John Deloney study. Yes. All right. But here's the other. I don't know that this study's been done, and I don't know that it needs to be. That last caller said something that's important in this. It's this illusion of freedom and singleness. I'm going to live with somebody for two years, five years, seven years. I'm going to have kids with them, but I'm not going to get married because I want to keep that shard One of freedom. One foot out the door. One foot out the door. And what you forget is he There's or she can't fully anchor into you. Those kids can't fully anchor into this unit um, because it's not fully a unit yet. Because you got one foot out of the boat. You're only rowing one ha- one armed, right? Yeah, it's so hard. It's impossible. And it's put her in a position almost as if she was in a domestic violence situation. She's not, mm-hmm. I don't think. But, um, but, but she's trapped. And that's the the abuser uses the trapped. Oh, you where, how are you going to live? You ain't getting money, mm-hmm. you know. And so they're trapped. So they stay in the punching bag scenario because that's the only way the kids get to eat. But also, guess what? The kids get to watch this, and so they think that's how it's done. And this is a problem. Yeah, it's a serious problem. So just telling you. I mean, what would you tell your 
seven-year-old daughter, right? Your your 17-year-old daughter, your 17-year-old son, what does a man look like in these situations? Well, you know, a, a reasonable length of engagement, uh, not living together prior to marriage, and then getting married, you have the high, oh, by the way, if you graduate from college, you know, you heard this thing, 50% of the marriages fail. You heard that one? Yeah. It's absolutely not true. That's right. It's absolutely not true. They don't. Okay. If you make more than $50,000 a year household income, both of you graduate from college and both of your parents are still married, you have a 90% chance of your marriage lasting. That's the stats. That's the real stats. Okay. So this, and some of these are, you can't control whether your parents are still together, but you can control graduating from school. You can control accomplishing goals. You can control delaying pleasure called maturity. You can control these things. These are controllables that you can use to set the table for your life. And then you get to see what the results are, what the, what the fruit is out of that. And so, you know, so, you know, none of my children prior to marriage lived together. None of them. It was it because dad's a big old meanie. No, it's because I taught them this stuff. Tom, you have a distinct advantage if you will have a reasonable length of engagement, graduate from school, make a reasonable income, marry someone that is of the same religious preference that you are, uh, learn to set boundaries with extended family. If you do all of these things it's, and, and agree on kids, how many to have and whether to let them live, all these kinds of things, right? And, and that was a joke. And, um, <laughs> sort of, you know, the, the, um, but I mean, when you have these things lined up ahead of time, your probability of having a, a, a marriage that lasts is very high. I mean, sure. And I getting ready to celebrate 41 years and there have been times we almost killed each other, but you fell back on that covenant. Well, and, and we fell back on this value system that set us up to win. Right. I mean, but, it's it's just ridiculous. I always like to flip the coin and, and ask myself, what is it? What has happened in this many years? And for people to opt out, and I, I do want to put some of the ownership on those of us who are married with kids. If you make marriage appear to be miserable, and you scream and you fight and you it's abusive and somebody's always leaving or coming or going, what kid in their right mind would look and go, I want to opt into that? And so I feel an, an extra responsibility to model for my kids, here's what love looks like. Here's what coming back together after disagreement, uh, here's what the repairs they call it. Here's what that looks like. Here's what saying I'm sorry looks like. Here's what asking for forgiveness looks like. I want to model this is the best way to to create a world going forward. And if you didn't have that and you're entering into marriage, you need to get some people in your life that you see do have 40 years, 50 years ahead of you, and they can give you some wisdom along the way. But there's something about, man, this doesn't have to be the old ball and chain as the old songs go. This could be the greatest thing that ever happened to you if you opt into it and you live into it that way. Well, and all the data that I'm just saying indicates that right is it perfect no no that hillbilly woman and i about killed each other a couple times <laughs> oh man you know i'm just saying it's not perfect i've almost set fire to my marriage yeah multiple but times. that but that doesn't mean that we weren't dialed in and going right. what do i want when i'm old really old i'm old now but i mean really old I mean, <sighs> what, what do i want then that's real old. you know that's real old. older than me that's really old <laughs> this is the ramsey show Hey, Dr. John Deloney here. I'm a huge fan of both meditation and prayer. And good mental health includes slowing down, gaining control of your thoughts, and plugging into something bigger than you. And Hallow makes it easy to start a daily practice of meditation, prayer, and finding peace. 
Hallow is the number one Bible app in the world, and you can tailor content towards your faith tradition. From scripture readings and prayers to meditation and journaling, Hallow makes it easy to practice prayer, meditate, and build a deeper, more meaningful spiritual life and rediscover true peace. Go to hallow.com slash Ramsey today to get three months of Hallow for free. That's hallow.com slash Ramsey. Thank you for joining us, America. We're glad you're here. Hey, we have folks who tune in to every single episode of The Ramsey Show. They know all the answers, but they're still stressed and stuck. Because knowing what you do with your money isn't the problem. Doing it is the answer. Personal finance is 80% behavior. It's only 20% head knowledge. And the proven way to change your behavior is by taking Financial Peace University. Ten million people have. This class is the difference between trying to get in shape on your own versus hiring a personal trainer. You'll have a coordinator who loves you enough to hold you accountable and encourage you. They're superheroes. And the other people in the class will be cheering you on. This is why this class has worked for so many millions of people. After nine weeks, you will never handle money the same way again. I can get that information for free off of YouTube. You could get it before we put it on YouTube. It was called Common Sense, but you weren't doing it then either. So when you go through the class, it's actually boot camp. You're actually going to do it. It's no longer. It's game on. Game on, baby. Break the huddle. Let's play. Join a, join a Financial Peace University class at RamseySolutions.com slash FPU. RamseySolutions.com slash FPU. Dr. John Deloney, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. Anne is in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Hi, Anne. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi. Thanks for having me. Sure. What's up? I have a, I have a question. Um, so I give you a little background. I make 110 a year. Um, I've paid off $36,000 in the last 18 months. Um, it's been hard, but Good. I've done it. Way to go. Yeah, yeah. Um, but my goal was to to be done by October of this coming year, uh-huh. and I owe seventeen thousand on my car. I have seventeen thousand in an air conditioner loan and fourteen thousand in a student loan. Um, and I really want those student loans gone before they kick back in. I love I've it. Been chipping away at it, but I really just want it done. So. I have an offer on my car um, for 33000 and that would get me out of my, my car loan, and that would get me out of the student loans, and it would just leave me with the air conditioners. Um, but it would also leave me with no car. I do have a teenager that has a car that we could carpool, and we could you know, get through the next few months. I could save up some cash and get a beater. Um, I don't know. I I think I probably just need to do this. I think I just need you to tell me to do it. (laughs) Because of where your headspace is, Mm -hmm. I really like where you are. And you've because you have a proven track record of winning already. Thirty six thousand paid off out of one hundred and ten. You're you're amazing. You're amazing. And you, you what you have decided. Let me say it a different way out loud. Is you've decided I want to be out of debt more than I want this car. Yeah. That's a fair trade. And, I, I would make that trade. Because you've also realized you can get another car. When you have yeah. no debt and you make 110000 you can save up and get a nice car pretty quick. Right. Yeah, absolutely. The one thing absolutely. I would do different it's in your been... plan than what you've said is I would pay the car off. I would pay whatever I could on those student loans, but I would save 5000 bucks to go get me my own car. Yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't carpool the teenager. Y'all need to love each other a little bit longer. Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> That's what they suggested, too. <laughs> we talked about it this morning, and they were like, well, well they don't really get a vote. They're a the teenager. <laughs> Teenagers don't get a vote. This is just, this is grown up to grown up, but yeah. I, I'd, I'd, I'd probably buy me a car that I can get around with. Oh, I'm okay with that, too. You know, th- three to five K. Um, and, and, you know, because you do make 110 and you're going to be done. All we're doing here is accelerating the inevitable. Mm-hmm. You're going to get out of debt. Yeah. All we're doing yeah. is doing it faster. And, and then the loop is the loop back is you're going to go get another car 24 months from now, this 20 grand, and you're going to pay cash for it. Yeah. And yeah, you, you will, mean, because, I mean, you'll have no debt, and you'll have your emergency fund in place, and you would upgrade out of a $5,000 car, making 110 What's your hang-up? Yeah. I would do it. I would do it. And I appreciate your I mean, teenager's would... emotional um, uh, support, but it's not necessary because <laughs> you already are a warrior princess. You are already getting it done. And, um, and when it involves them sacrificing, they're never going to vote for that. So that's okay. All right. Right. Whoopty. Okay. And yeah. if, All right. if, if this um, if this is one more one more little push towards making this call, your kids are going to watch their mom go yeah. all in. Yep. And my mom, look, I remember when I was a teenager what my mom did. When your daughter is a or your son is a, a grandparent, they're going to be sitting on the back porch. Yeah, back when I was a kid, my mama sold off everything. I thought she was going to sell me. By God, she mm-hmm. got out of debt and it changed everything. You'll be telling that story. Or your kid's going to be one year into grad school and thinking about quitting, and you're going to say, go all in. And he's going to have a picture of what that actually looks like. Right. Yeah. You're amazing. Right. It's pretty awesome. You're amazing. Well done. Very, very well done. Get them. And should I should I get more than one quote? Because this thirty three thousand came from a dealership. Yes, absolutely. Yes, you should get more than one quote. We need to maximize this asset. Okay. Yeah, get more than one quote, and consider taking an extra month to do it and selling it private sale. What kind of car is it? It's a Toyota Tacoma. It'll sell. 21. It'll sell fast. You may want to sell it private. Yeah. You look on Kelly Blue Book, um, and that's a hot truck. Okay. Real hot truck. Yeah, yeah that, that truck will sell. It's a good truck, too. Um, and the, uh, but anyway, I, I would, um, now look on Kelly Blue Book and see what private sale is. If it's 10 grand more, wait a month and sell it for eight grand more to an individual. Mm-hmm. Are you, I, okay. Are, <laughs> hey, let me ask you. Go ahead, I'm Dave. I'm going to jump in because I, I hear some, there's somebody's face that's in your mind that's going to make fun of this decision, isn't there? <laughs> I think that I just feel stupid. No, no, I no, no. You're not telling the truth. Ago. You're not. There's isn't there. Answer my question. Yeah. I yeah. Mean, okay. What I want you to do right now, I want you to stick your tongue out at them. Yeah. Because they don't get a vote in your prosperity. In your right. peace, in your sleep. You're amazing. Go mm-hmm. with you. I vote with you, not them. Get them, girl. Get them. And Tacoma people are a special, I mean, that's, that's a gang. That's a it's community. A taco. The tacos. We had tacos in our family. Yeah. Winston, yeah. Winston drove one for 10 years. Daniel drove one for 10 years. You're opting out of that club to go to, to sleep well at night. Yeah. All it's right. Awesome. Today's question of the day is brought to you by Neighborly, your hub for home services. As the weather warms up, Neighborly can help you find local service pros like the Ground Skies, the Five Star Painting, and Mosquito Joe to turn your outdoor space into your favorite space. Find the help you need. These are great folks. Neighborly.com. Today's question comes from Shelly in Virginia. Shelly writes, my son has a six-month emergency fund and enough to save for a 25% down payment. He's been pre-approved for a mortgage, but it's asking me why an arm is a bad choice. Not the body part, but the adjustable rate mortgage. Simple answer. I'm assuming this is a huge no-no. I'd love to know why. Simple answer. It stands for adjustable rate mortgage. Where have interest rates been going lately? Up. Up? What do we want to adjust up for? In a rising interest rate environment, that's dumber than a rock. You might have an argument in a falling interest rate environment, and then I'd have to teach you a 20-minute class on why arms suck. Um, <laughs> but, but in addition to that, just straight up, in a rising interest rate environment, you should never even have to ask this question, 
where you know adjust, because I think rates are going to go down then refinance but you do not want the uh, the arms came on the scene because banks got caught in an escalating interest rate environment with a bunch of low interest rate mortgages in their portfolio that's called disintermediation when banks don't like making not making money they don't like disintermediation when their portfolio is upside down compared to the marketplace and so they invented this thing where their portfolio adjusts when rates go up it's good for them. And you pay for it. Don't do an adjustable rate mortgage ever, ever, under any circumstances. If you have to do an arm, you can't afford a house. This is The Ramsey Show. John Deloney, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today. Thanks for being with us. Kelly is in Oakland, California. Hi, Kelly. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, Dave. Thank you so much for having me. Sure. What's up? Um, okay, so my husband is a guarantor on his mom's mortgage. Um, it's not under his name, uh, just the guarantor. We did a cash-out refinance of her house um, prior to her creating a living trust for um, some home improvement projects with the verbal expectation that she would put the title in my husband's name upon her passing. However, without me knowing, she threw in an additional clause that if we ever sell the house, we would be required to pay half of the profits to his eldest son, who is currently 20 years old, even though we have two additional babies under two years old. Um, this clause was thrown in after the loan was approved. Uh, we've already thrown $100,000 of our own money, cash, into the house. Um, the house is worth, as of right now, conservatively $1.25 million, and the current loan balance is a little under 400000 so my question is, now that we are out of um, baby step two... And, is mama um, dead? Answer. Um, mom, mom is unfortunately going through a lot of health situations. And is she mentally competent? To... Yes, she is. Okay. Your husband, her son, needs to walk into her room with fresh papers and have this fixed. She okay. was in... That was unethical not fair and dumb and she needs to fix it and she can do that with a signature if your husband will make his mother do that okay what happens if she does <laughs> because we don't know yeah we don't know what to do if um... i want her to sign it to a way to a charity i don't want anything else to do with it i want it sold and given away to a charity I do not want to wreck a 20-year-old irresponsible person's life. Because you know what an irresponsible person with 400000 is? Really freaking irresponsible. Right. Dumb grandmother. Dumb, dumb, dumb grandmother. Right. Bad grandmother. Bad grandmother. Bad, 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 bad. Do you have any insight <laughs> as to why she did this? Um. So she she wanted to make sure that um, her grandson would be taken care of when she's gone. Yeah, Before it's an act of love, and, and she married. she was dumb. That's why she did. Yeah, it. she has a, she has an improper really view of what love looks like. <laughs> yeah, she needs. To, it's dumb. It's just, you really your husband mm -hmm. allowed this. I'm angry with him yeah. too, because his mother mm -hmm. has told him what to do way too many times. He's way too grown up for this. Mommy said, and then mommy did, and he didn't say anything about it because mommy, mother dearest, nope, mm -hmm. nope, 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 nope. And you're mad at her, and you need to be mad at him because he allowed it. And I'm kind of mad at both of them. Yeah, I don't blame you. <laughs> it's easier to be mad at her because she doesn't live in the house with you. But Yeah, man. but he's he's the one that allowed this to go on. And while he put his name on the loan, I mean, that's right. just unethical on her part. 
Mm-hmm. And on his part, very weak to allow this to go down. Does she not trust your husband? No, so, she um, just had a fit of stupidity and put it on paper. I'm telling you, it's not. I don't think it's deep stuff here. Uh, well, I, I think there is a little bit of untrust. Um, before we got married, he was very bad with money. And since then, we've turned everything around, called baby steps, got out of about six As if giving it to a 20-year-old fixes that. <laughs> yeah, what are you going to do? <laughs> yeah. So, There's a lot of control um, issues mom has. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> That's spoken like somebody who really loves her husband, but man, you're more mom than you are a wife. Yeah, he, he needs, listen, saddle up, saddle up. He needs to march That's right good. in there and say, Mom, this was wrong. I went along with it. I shouldn't have, and I'm not going along with it. So here's what's going to happen. You die. I'm going to sue the trust and ask the judge to undo your stupidity if you don't undo it with a signature right now. Because giving a 20-year-old $400,000 is absolutely, that's irresponsible with money, is absolutely asinine. Because it's going to cause more problems than blessings. Yeah. Okay. It's not a blessing. What does a cocaine person, what does a cocaine addict do when they get more money? More cocaine. What's an irresponsible person do when they get more money? More irresponsible. What's a uh, generous person do when they get more money? More generous. Money magnifies our good and bad parts that all of us have, me included. And, uh, you know, what does Dave get? More things with loud mufflers. You know, I mean, what, you know, they're, they're <laughs> redneck. I mean, you know, what, but I mean, everybody's got, right? That. So uh, so let's let's back it up. Let's say grandma did this perfectly and there's only one kid. Is the right thing to do is to put it in a in a trust? Yeah. Yeah. That has yeah. multiple multi year payouts yeah, on it. Yeah, yeah. And different 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 triggering mechanisms that indicate responsibility. Mm-hmm. Like I, you know, if he's going to college, I would graduate say Graduate college. Here, I, if you're gonna go to college, thing. you need to graduate college. That's a triggering event. Mm-hmm. You need to uh, be 25 and not be deeply in debt, you know, and a triggering event, you know. And so some level of maturity. I'm not saying all 20-year-olds are doofuses. She said her 20-year-old mm. was irresponsible. The mother just said that. Okay, so I'm, that's what I'm going off of. So, Well, he's been um, had a ringside seat to which, his dad. By the way, I've been irresponsible. When I was 20, you didn't give me 400 oh, grand. That would have been a bad idea. That would have been the worst idea. There have been a lot of loud mufflers and beer involved. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just a bad idea. No, I'm not saying that everybody, but, the, but the, and there, there, we've had 20 year olds on this show that were more responsible and had their crap together more than a lot of 60 year olds. So can't, can't, it's not an age thing, yeah. but whatever you are, good or bad, is going to be magnified. And when you're gifting or doing inheritance, you need to structure it to ensure that you're being a blessing and not magnifying stupidity. And let's go one step up the river here. A mother that would do this to her son last minute, dishonestly, behind closed doors without telling them, has done this crap for years. She's a controller. And if you are married to somebody like this, you've got to speak up. If you're married to a coward who won't speak up against his own mom or her own mom or her own dad or his own dad and say, we as a family are not getting into this deal. And let me tell you, this is not, not a, this is not a coward in the sense of lack of courage. This is, I don't want to put up with the crap. Yes. That this is going to unleash when I bother to have a conflict with her because all conflicts with her don't end well. He just doesn't want to screw with it. I mean, yeah. that's a different kind of cowardice. I, I don't, because I know it's, you know, when I walk into the forest with the bear, I'm going to meet a bear. I mean, he knows what he's got. He's dealt with it his whole life. So it's, it's not cowardice like he's a little wuss. That's not the point. He's like, it ain't worth the fight. Screw it. That's where he is. But it is worth the fight. We well, put $100,000 of four, his own money. And of, your, and of your own money and four hundred dollars going to an irresponsible 20-year-old. It's worth the fight. It's worth the fight. It's worth calling her out. And, oh, by the way, you signed the note. So that's, that's what I mean, doing business. You know, you know. At some point, you got to go, it is worth the fight. But this is a, this, when we say coward, we're not like sniveling, yellow bellied in the corner, sucking your thumb coward. This is just, I don't want to deal with the pain in the butt that is mom when you confront her. But the other side of that is, it's your job to protect your kid. Exactly. And yourself. And your family. Yeah. yeah so that's your job. You know, so this whole thing comes at you, you go, you know what? I'm not signing that note. Yeah, we're not going to do that. We're not going to do that. Yeah. No, it's not, not an option.
You want, you want to do the deal? We're doing it my way. Yeah, we'll do it my way. Or or not at all. It's okay. Not and I also stuff. understand, hey, this is a million-dollar house. We're going to have this much money. Mm -mm, mm -mm. I'm not, not it's worth, not worth it. losing my family over. Not, not worth burning everything down. Uh, the whole dad gum. And Dave, <sighs> you spoke with, for, with such insight that it's almost as though you've seen this before. <laughs> 30 years of doing this? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, a couple times. Parents and grandparents who try to bless their their lineage, and they and, bless. You it. know, the worst one I ever had was early on on this show. I took a call from a grandfather who was sobbing, and he was he was uh, eighty nine years old, and he had co signed for a thirty thousand dollar pickup for his grandson, and it got repoed, and they were coming after his farm because he had no money, but he had a farm. Oh no! And they were going to take the eighty nine year old's farm for the reposition on the pickup. And nobody in the family gave a crap. Step in. He thought he was helping his grandson by co-signing. And I'll never forget that 89-year-old crying on the air. This is The Ramsey Show. Hey, it's John Deloney, co-host of The Ramsey Show. Did you know over 18 million people listen to The Ramsey Show every week? A lot of those people listen on one of our 600-plus radio stations across the country. To find a station near you, go to RamseySolutions.com slash show. Solutions broadcasting from the pods, moving and storage studios. It's the Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. Open phones around here at 888-825-5225. My co-host today, Dr. John Deloney of the Dr. John Deloney Show, a podcast on Ramsey Networks that is unbelievably, fabulously popular. And, of course, number one best-selling book of Own Your Past, Change Your Future. He deals with the mental health space and the relationship space. And uh, so always a fun one-two punch when he and I get to serve together on these microphones. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Naomi is in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Hi, Naomi. What's up? Hi. Um, first, I just want to say thank you so much for for taking my call. Um, I know that um, I've been listening to you a lot over the past couple of months. I guess I'm a new new listener, and um, it's just so obvious and apparent that everybody there genuinely cares about the people you're dealing with and really tries to help. And I just find that so inspiring and thank encouraging um, in today's society. So thank, thank you. you That's so the much. best compliment I've had today. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. That's true, <laughs> so, and uh, thank you for noticing that. How can we help you? Um, so I'm calling because I have a question about how to deal with or manage ongoing medical expenses. It's not one lump sum. It's not one thing. Um, my son is sick. He's been sick for 10 years. And um, over the course of the 10 years, you know, there's been some ups and downs. But you could say that the medical expenses have, you know, probably averaged about 20% of our income. Wow. And, um yeah, and my husband is, uh, he's a pastor, so there hasn't always been a whole lot of income, you know, to go around yeah. to pay things. So um, we don't have a lot of debt. In fact, we, we only owe on our house. I don't know how we could afford to do what we do if we mm -hmm. had anything like a car payment or anything so like that. So how old but, um, is your baby? Well, now he's 16. He, okay. he was six. When what we was the, what's the nature started. of his illness? He has chronic Lyme disease. 15% um, of people who get Lyme disease, it doesn't go away with the 30-day treatment of antibiotics. Mm -hmm. And he actually got it when he was three and a half, mm -hmm. which made it more severe. He didn't get the normal kind of treatment mm. that uh, adults would get, like a strong enough antibiotic. So he's got some neurological things going on. Yeah, and he, he's he been up and down. Like, he actually was doing a lot better, and then he got COVID. He, I mean, he got COVID two years ago, mm -hmm. and that put everything way back, mm -hmm. set him back to 
debilitating headaches and the treatment protocol mm. that we found mm. that had been working for four or five years suddenly wasn't. And it's like a whole new amount of medical expenses and mm. things trying to get him back to where he can, you know, at least function. Even How, how's his, how's his energy level better. today? Energy? Um, he He's... It, it comes and goes, but he, he's better. He actually, with the COVID, he started getting like debilitating migraines. Yeah, that was three years, that was three years ago, Lyme right? Disease. How is he today? Uh, COVID was like, how old is he today? He's how 16. is he today? He's, he's not as good as he was, um, you know, in 2020, mm -hmm. but he's better than he was at the beginning of 2022. Good, so I guess good. he's in the middle. Okay. So here's what, um, I, the reason I'm asking you all these things is number one, to check on him, but number two, what you've, you're calling about is how to budget for this. And of course it's impossible to predict exactly, but we can say based on what we know of the history, the COVID episode, and the improvement since COVID, based on that, not emotions, but what does logic tell you factually that you think is a reasonable forecast for the coming three or four years that you're going to be paying the medical expenses? And I assume you've got a health insurance as well. So, you know, what out of pocket do you need to budget for a reasonable person that would project what you guys have been facing because it is a chronic thing you're dealing with it's ongoing and the only question yes, is how please. bad it is going forward not how bad it has been but how bad it is going forward now i know you and i can't project we're not god but you can tell me based on his prognosis today take your mommy uh heart which is wonderful and set it aside for a second just look at it from your brain and say based on where he is today where do you really think you're going to spend in the next 12 months and 24 months and 36 months. And then just put that in the budget monthly. If you think it's going to be $10,000, put $800 a month in the budget. Out of pocket, I'm talking about. If you think it's going to be $3,000, put $250 a month in the budget. And so, um, you know, anytime you're dealing with something chronic, you just, I've got a friend that has Crohn's disease and he's, you know, he's got a, just a, it's a constant thing. It's a chronic issue. And he's constantly writing checks. He's constantly making his deductible. He's constantly making his co-pays, right? Because it's just, a, he just fights with health. It's just, it's sad. It's awful. It's hard on him. He's tough as nails, but man. Whew. And, but that's the thing. You gotta, you just gotta, you gotta go, okay, quantify it because you're asking me about the budget. So we got to quantify it. So $6,000 a year, 500 bucks a month. I'm just going to put it in the month. Like I got a car payment. And I'm just going to put it on there, set it aside. I don't need it this month. Don't need it next month, but I'm going to need it sometime during this 12. It's probably going to happen. And so I got to get ready. And we're, we're just, you know, and uh, it's a, uh, here's what's weird. When you do that math and you lay it all out, it will calm you down about his health. Hello. Okay. Yes. Yes. I'm here. Um, okay. So, so. If the amount I put in the budget, which I would say would, I don't know, maybe like $1,600 a month, but then that just makes our budget tend to not work. Well, at that are, are you really going to spend 1600 a month? Yeah. That's $20,000 yeah, a year. Absolutely. $20,000 a year out of pocket, yeah. out of pocket. Well, it was more than that last year. I didn't um, ask about so, last year. I asked about next year. <laughs> Um, I, you know, I would, I would probably hope for maybe like 15 or 16,000 out of pocket next year. Okay. Then if that's, if that's what you're really going to spend, then you really need to put that in your budget. And here's a hard conversation that y'all are going to have to have. Um, I had somebody call into my show this morning and we have a very similar conversation. Him and his wife adopted, they had a beautiful two year old daughter and then his wife passed away mm. and he was set up to be a high powered accountant and he had to change his career trajectory and take a totally different kind of role because that his life changed. And maybe your husband has wanted to be a pastor. He's, he's in it, but reality financially is sitting before him saying, you can't continue to make this much money in this kind of job and take care of your sick child. And that's a hard conversation. It's a conversation that no one, none of us want to have, especially when we feel like we've got a calling. 
but man, we've got to look at our kids. And the, the way I would uh, phrase this is we have to choose reality. We've got to own reality that sits before us. And there's a financial reality and a purpose reality. All those things are real. But if you can't afford it, you got to find something, figure out something else. And yeah, what that guy's facing, what that mom's facing is very real. Very real, very yeah. scary. We had a guy named Chris that worked here. Yeah. And we, he's, out on, he's out on disability. So, ouch. This is The Ramsey Show. Hey guys, being free to make your own medical decisions is a big deal these days. Christian Healthcare Ministries gives members the freedom to choose the doctors and providers they want without the frustration of worrying about networks and with no waiting period to join. It's a membership-based nonprofit ministry where hundreds of thousands of Christians share funds to pay for and pray for each other's medical bills. For over 40 years, CHM has helped families living across all 50 states. So see if CHM could be right for your family. Check out more today at chministries.org slash budget. Hey guys, if you're wondering whether to buy or sell a home this year, here's what you need to know about the housing market. There's still more demand for homes than there are homes to buy. There's still a shortage. Median home price is expected to keep rising just at a slower rate than the crazy time back in COVID. But I mean, it's still going up and interest rates haven't stopped going up. So what's this mean? It means if you're buying a home, you may still face competition to big price tags. And if you wait, you're going to face more competition and more price tags. So if you want to sell your home, good time to sell it. But of course, it's going to sell slower than the crazy times when you got 89 offers in one weekend. Those days are gone and they should be gone. They were not healthy. So it's good. Life is good to buy a home, to sell a home. Now's the time. Go to RamseySolutions.com to find an agent that we recommend. RamseySolutions.com slash agent. They're Ramsey trusted. These are top performing agents around the country who our team has vetted and trusts to serve you well. They did not get their license last week and they've not sold only two homes and they're not your uncle. Well, probably because, you know, you don't pick your agent by him being your uncle or a friend at church who just got her license and she's so sweet. No, that's just dumb. Don't do that. You're about to lose money on your house. Don't do that. Jessica is with us in Philadelphia. Hi, Jessica. How are you? Hi, Dave. I'm doing great and freaking out a little bit because I made it on air with you. How are you? Uh, I'm freaking out because I made it on air with you. What's up? Oh, you're the sweetest. <laughs> Jessica, he is freaked um, out. Trust me. Trust me. <laughs> this is Dave freaked I'm out. Deloney. So uh, my question is... We sold our home last year when, you know, prices were ridiculous, and mm -hmm. we have a good amount of money mm -hmm. to put into um, a 529 and an ESA for our children, but I don't want to trigger a gift tax. That's, I'm pretty that's sure that has right nothing to do with the gift tax. Okay, because... Um, you can double check to... your tax guy because I'm not a thousand percent sure, but mm -hmm. I've never heard of somebody hit it, getting hit with a gift tax, putting money into a 529. To start okay, with, well, you'd have to put in more than whatever the limit is this year, 12,000, 15,000 bucks, whatever it is. But I um, can't even remember. I'm trying to pull mm -hmm. up a cheat sheet here. Blah, 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 blah. Anyway, yeah. So. Uh, well, that's what I was running into. 16,000. Yeah, 16,000. If you're going over 16,000, you'd have a gift tax this year. But the. Uh, uh, but. Um, yeah, I, but I'm pretty sure this has nothing to do with gift tax. I'm pretty sure if you're putting it into the college fund, that doesn't apply to this. Pretty sure if you put it in okay, your minor great, great. children's name, it doesn't apply to this, but, um, but I'm not positive. Mm -hmm. So you could double check your tax advisor. If you're working with a smart investor pro to open the 529, or if you have a 529 with them, they certainly could answer the question. Uh, they would know off the top of their head, but I've never heard of somebody being gift tax doing that. So I doubt, I'm pretty sure it's exempt from that. So, but I, again, double check because my tax, I'm always quick to say when I'm not positive and I'm not 
positive on that one. Tim's in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Hi, Tim. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, how are you? Thanks for taking my call. Sure. What's up? Um, so I'm 39. I'm completely debt free. Good. Um, yeah. Well, I guess I shouldn't say that. We own a we own a downtown building that we owe thirty eight thousand dollars on. Um, <laughs> we are going to be. <laughs> hey, I'm John close. Deloney, and I'm six feet tall, except yeah, I'm five eight. I know. I I know. I forgot to say that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have one hundred sixty thousand saved up cash. Uh huh. Um, and we are looking at probably going to be building a house next year. Cool. Um, we own where we at are right now, so we're probably going to tear down the existing home and build um, mm-hmm. on our place. Um, I want to take and pay off the building mm-hmm. right now. Mm-hmm. Um, is that is that something you would... The wife doesn't really want me to. Why? But, but she doesn't think it's going to... She doesn't... How'd she put it? She doesn't think... She doesn't see the problem of making the monthly payment on it, of the $200 or whatever that we owe. Yeah, okay. And I'm like, well, uh, we can just turn yeah. that over to the house. Yeah, if it's not a problem, then it won't be a problem when it's paid off either. Correct. So it's ir- her I point don't. was it's irrelevant. So it's irrelevant. Pay it off. Um, it's not irrelevant because you're going to be have a different switch that flips inside of you when you have absolutely zero debt. Now, what's your household income? Oh, well, I'd say probably right at a hundred. Okay, so what are you going to? How much are you going to spend on the building project? Well, right now we're looking at maybe one hundred sixty thousand dollars, one hundred eighty thousand dollars house. That's why she doesn't want you to pay off the building. Because if you're going to turn around with one hundred twenty thousand, how are you going to have the money to build the house you want? Correct, because I mean we still got to keep twenty thousand in our emergency fund. Yeah, well, you got one hundred sixty. You said, but if we pay off a forty thousand dollars, thirty eight thousand dollars mortgage, we could leave me one hundred twenty, and you're wanting to build one hundred sixty. So where are you going to get the other forty? That's why she doesn't want to do it. Correct. Yeah, that's it. But, so instead of having a mortgage on her house, she would rather you have a mortgage on the building. And I'm probably agreeing with that. What's the house? Oh, you're the, you're tearing down a prop. You, you own the land already, and you're living on the land yeah. now. Correct. Correct. Mm. Where are y'all going to live when you tear the house down? Um, we're either going to have to rent a place or possibly live. We do have a camper we can live in. Okay. Um. Yeah. All right, so budget the house carefully because 160000 even in Cedar Rapids, is, is certainly not the uh, – it's not a mansion. No. No, it's it's just an easy – Well, let me just tell you, house, you can but... blink and this will be two sixty. Right, yeah, I know. So you need to lay out a game plan in detail and start drawing a plan – and figuring out your, you know, your actual materials cost, your actual contractor cost. What are you really going to do? Um, I'm building a home right now, and uh, me and the builder have uh, had a lot of discussions for three months before we broke ground. And we have three pieces of paper. We met last night, and we managed to these three pieces of paper: the schedule, the budget, and the blueprint. And we have to stay on track on all three: the schedule. The blueprint, but it was all planned on paper before we three months before we broke ground. We ordered ordered the windows and the appliances of two months before we broke ground because of supply chain. They'll be sitting in the warehouse early, so we're not going to slow down. We're going to be on time. We're going to be on budget, and we're going to stick to the freaking plan. And if you don't do that, you're a nightmare for your builder, and you're going to blow your budget up, and you're going to be four years building a pretzel. Mm-hmm. You follow me? So yeah, if you if you guys will do all that planning and laying out, then you may figure out we're not going to build for a little while. We're going to save money for a little bit more. And that could be a possibility too. Yeah, it could be. I don't care what you do. You may you may choose to build for one twenty and pay off the building. I mm-hmm. don't care. You can do you can do any of these you want to do. But I, here's what you're right now. You have a vague statement of well, we want to build a house. And that's the end of your information. You don't have any more information other than you want to put it on that lot where that house is you got now that you're going to tear down. But you really need I, – I, I want you looking at blueprints. I want you talking to the builder. I want you to get budgets and supply. You know, what's your lumber package you're going to run? You know, how long is this going to take? Because if it's going to take two years – if it's going to be three years from now before you need to write the last check, well, you can afford to save up a lot making 100 I also want you guys to sit down and create a, 
a five to 10 year plan for your family Mm -hmm. because you really want to get this building paid off. She doesn't want to have a mortgage on this new house. Y'all are planning on building. And she wants a new house. And she wants a new house. Y'all in some ways y'all are kicking some of this down the road. Sit down and let's come up and you have a game plan for your house. Have a game plan for your marriage. Have a game plan for your finances over the next five to 10 years. Yeah. And just, and just follow the plan out. We're at the end of the story. We're living in the house. She wants paid for and the building's paid for. There you go. And now worry what number of months out there is that five, 60 months is 64 months and you can lay that out it's it's sixth grade math dave i had a buddy in college that uh, was connected to the building industry and one of the a builder told him something important once he said i can always tell the difference between the millionaires who are buying a house and the middle class guys with the big loan because the millionaires come in with the ads from the appliance store that said we agreed on this one and the middle class guy with the big loan says, I don't know, man, what do you think? And he said, there's that attention to detail. We're going to do it like yep. this that preserves that um, that millionaire status over time. I told my builder I'm going to pay him a little extra because I'm about to drive him and my wife crazy. I'm a project manager from hell. Oof. I mean, it's just detail, man. It's detail. This is The Ramsey Show. If you're like most people, your home is your most valuable asset. And when you want to make improvements, it can feel like everything costs too much or takes too long. But something as simple as custom window coverings from Blinds.com can completely change your space and add value to your home. We've recommended Blinds.com for over a decade, so you know you can trust them. From blinds, drapes, and shutters to motorized shades, they make it easy and affordable to upgrade your entire home, and their team is ready to help with everything, from design consultation to measuring and installation. Plus, there are never any misleading quotes or hidden fees. Everything's backed by their 100% satisfaction guarantee, and shipping is always free. See why Blinds.com is the number one online retailer of custom window coverings. Go to Blinds.com now and save 40% off selected products. Visit Blinds.com today for more info. Dr. John Deloney, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today. Thanks for being with us, America. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Thanks for being here. Hey, based on our rankings, we're in the top 10 podcasts in the entire world, top 15 podcasts in the entire world, Uh, and that has gone up recently. Uh, Based on our ratings on radio, uh, based on our Spotify and our Apple numbers and our YouTube numbers, there's a whole bunch of you that are new. Thank you. We're honored to have you in our audience. Uh, we will love you and we will tell you the truth. And sometimes that will make you mad. Just be prepared because we love you and we will tell you the truth. That's what we do. And if you want to help us, we're not going to spend $300 million on marketing like a sofa. We're not buying a, uh, uh, like a football stadium or something allergies are bad this time of year and um but the uh uh, if you want to help us you can subscribe follow the show whatever it is whichever way you do it click the subscribe button click the follow button click the share button and send it on send it on yeah send it on to them and uh good stuff let people know about leave us a five-star review Uh, mama said if you hang anything nice to say don't say anything at all so five stars work thank you very much we're glad you're here We appreciate you being with us. Williams in San Antonio, Texas. Remember the Alamo. What's up, William? Oh, good afternoon, uh, Dave. Afternoon. I uh, had a rather unfortunate financial incident in in our marriage. Happened last fall. My wife uh, got victimized in an Internet fraud 
and not only lost a sizable amount of cash, but also took out some loans to help these people. And uh, some of those were short-term credit card things like buying gift cards. And then there were two installment loans. One was for 23500 one was for 17500 The rest of them, the smaller credit cards and such, I'm using the snowball method to take care of those, but I need advice on the installment loans. When it comes to this uh, fraud, it's usually one of, or t- of two things. Usually it's some sort of romantic interest or it's some sort of somebody crying out for help with medical assistance or some sort of injustice. What is it in your, in your, in your situation? Uh, <laughs> uh, it would be, it would be the former. Uh, my wife and I have been having, been having some uh, problems, been together for 25 years and uh, things just kind of, uh, I don't know. They happened, and I didn't didn't see the warning signs. How's your marriage now? But it's it's much better. I've been I've been getting therapy, and she has been too. And we've been making some inroads and just uh, basic s- stuff like how we speak to each other. And I'm proud of you, man. That's how we hard. Try try try. Well, here's the thing. I, I have a bunch of people tell me. Well, I would I would divorce somebody that would do that, and I, I'm not going to throw away 25 years. Okay. I I said I would make a full year as a concerted effort to get this thing turned around financially and emotionally. And part of the emotional thing is me. I realized I needed to do some some work, uh, and so we're both doing therapy, and it seems to be benefiting. Well, you're a, you're both. a beacon of light for men who are find themselves in in emotional situations without the right tools in the toolkit and you can do one of two things you can just take up your toolkit and go home or you can you can storm the gates of hell and try to find more tools and that's what you're doing man i'm proud of you i'm proud of you amen thank you it's awesome what's your household income sir Uh, oh Okay. Um, does she work outside the home? No, we're we're both in our mid seventies. No, we're both retired. Oh boy. So there, there's money there to take care of the short term stuff. The the. You mean what do you mean the, money? You have a nest egg. Uh, we we still have some resources, a four hundred one k, and I have some I have some money in my account. All the debts are in her name. What is the uh, how much money is in your account? Forty five thousand dollars. And how much money is in your four hundred one k? Be about the same, a little okay. slightly and, and less. And not counting these two installment loans, how much miscellaneous is there? Hmm. The little credit card mosquitoes. Yeah, I'm gonna say nine, ten thousand. Okay. All right. Um, I've got an income tax refund check coming in. The two thousand's gonna get knocked off for that. Mm-hmm. And I, I would I've write got, a check. Uh, out, I would write a check out of yours today, and pay off all the credit cards. That leaves the forty and close all the accounts. Okay, now that is a gesture on your part towards the healing that you're searching for. The forty is still sitting okay. there. We'll come back to that in a minute. Then I want to meet with her and her therapist and your therapist and however y'all are doing this marriage stuff. And uh, somehow you've got to get some checks and balances and start to incrementally rebuild trust that you're not throwing good money after bad and this doesn't happen again. Because in the back of your mind, you're if I clean this out and this happens again, I ain't got anywhere to go. That's what's happening in the back of your mind. So you've got to know 
that this is solid going forward before you write any more big checks. But okay. nine thousand, but nine thousand dollars in the scope of your life, you would pay that right now for healing. And I would. Yeah. Yeah. Let's let's get rid of all the mosquitoes. Get it down to seventeen five and twenty three five. And then let's just sit there with those two while we work on this relationship. And as your trust reaches closer to 100 percent, and that is going to require some demonstrations as well as on her part and your part and healing and some time to rebuild. And as that is rebuilt and you approach 100 percent on that, then I'm going to start trying to figure out a way to get those paid off. But right now I want to clear the the white noise, the clutter out of my mind with all these little bills that, because every time you write a check on this, it picks the scab. It opens the wound. And I'm trying to get it down to writing just two checks. That's very perceptive. You're right. Now, I mean, I get pissed off all, all over again every time you do this. And you have to go through the whole process you've been doing in therapy. You start forgiveness again. You start to have to go back through the whole thing. And, and you just you start having all these conversations between your ears. We all do this. That's how I know. I, I wouldn't be guilty of it. No, not me. But, yeah. But, I mean, yeah, you write checks for things you're, that remind you of bad things. It's bad. So, Dave, at what point does – and, again, in service of choosing reality, just owning. This is where we find ourselves. Do – Two people in their 70s have to commit to going back to work for a year mm -hmm. and earn another $40,000 to pay these debts off. If she's of good health, I mean, I would talk to her therapist about this. I'm not going to intervene in that. But if she's of good health, um, Sounds like both of them. she's trying to re-earn trust. And, um, you know, I'm 12-stepping here, but, uh, you know, make, Go make, good, amends. make good, make amends. Yeah. I think she goes back to work. Yeah. And starts working on these other two loans. I, I think that's not because of financial, but just I think that's a representative movement towards owning this. It will give a place for that energy yeah, to make, too. You know, you know, make amends. It is a twelve-step thing, and so you got to go back and where you can correct the wrongs. It's part of being repentant or sorry. You know, and, and nobody uh, wants to work in their seventies, and that's where we find ourselves, right? And nobody wants to get scammed by a romance on the internet, but it's where we find ourselves. This is The Ramsey Show. John Deloney, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today. Thank you for joining us, America. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Brian is with us in Austin, Texas. Hey, Brian. Welcome to the Ramsey hey. Show. Hey, Dave. Honored to talk to you, sir, and grateful for your ministry. And my wife and I are recently, uh, we've discovered you guys and the baby steps, and um, we're beginning to think we're doing everything a little backwards now that we've we've learned about your stuff. So specifically, we have three debt items. So we have two car, car notes and then a mortgage, those three items, uh, no credit card debt. The cars are 55 and 20, uh, so about 75 total. However, we built up some savings and investments um, just in index funds. Uh, it's like 180 around there. And then we have more than that in retirement. So my question is, we want to send our kids just because – just concerns about, you know, school, curriculum, all that stuff. We want to send them to Christian private school. And what our question is, is how do we pay for that? Like, should we, I was thinking of just tapping in and drawing from our investments and paying that roughly 10 grand a year. But then my wife had a good idea. We're listening to you. And so we're like, man, or do we just pay the car notes off first? What's your household um, income? In, uh, 94 Actually, well, my wife's going to be working part-time so uh, in the fall, so um, it'll be about 100, 105, somewhere where, around there. Where did the 180 come from? Uh, I used to, before my job now, I used to be in a higher 
income earning job. Why aren't you now? Uh, Because I'm in vocational full-time ministry now. (laughs) Oh, okay. Okay. (laughs) Yeah. That's fine. I'm just curious. I didn't know. Okay. So, because the numbers just didn't, they didn't, they didn't add up. Okay. And um, that's good. Um, (laughs) What's the school cost? It's 10 grand a year. Per kid? Um, Well, it'll be for both of them. Okay. For both of them. Okay, so ten grand out of one hundred and five is a budget item, and you write a check, pay off the cars. But I'm not sure a fifty five thousand dollar car fits in a hundred and five thousand dollar income. Matter of fact, I'm sure it doesn't. Re- even if it's paid for, yep. even if it's paid for, what in the world is that? Oh, the car, Mama's SUV. No, <laughs> no, this is Dad's no, truck. Uh, He's in Austin. Uh, no, well, almost. It was a Tesla, so it was a. a truck. Oh. I, I gave up my my uh, older car, and finally, you're finally a hipster pastor, man. Yeah, so that's cool. Um, yeah, here's the thing. We so what would I do if I woke up in your shoes, and why? Why is important because I want you to think for yourself, not do stuff. And you wouldn't do stuff just because Dave said Brian. But um, so what we've discovered mathematically is it's very difficult to get ahead when a large portion of your asset base versus your income is depreciating, going down in value like a rock. And um, so all cars with wheels and or motors, go anything with wheels and or motors goes down in value, period. Now, Mm -hmm. so when you have too many things with wheels and motors that go down in value versus your income, and this did fit in your old life. Yep. Because you were probably making two hundred or more, and so uh, you know, fifty five thousand dollar car is not a problem. But we're, what, the numbers that we've crunched over thirty years of doing this say that if you've got more than half of your annual income tied up in things going the wrong way, you're going to struggle. So I would challenge whether to keep the Tesla or not. You need to pray about that. Think about it. I'm not going to tell you what to do, but you've got too much tied up in things going the wrong way versus your income. That's what I'm observing. <laughs> Now, so at a okay. minimum, I'd write a check and pay them off today. The next step I would consider is stepping out of that Tesla and moving into a more reasonable vehicle for somebody that makes 100000 a year. Okay. Yeah, that's fair. That makes sense. And I think you can handle a $10,000 budget out of 105 if you watch your P's and Q's and just send your kids to school as a budget item. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I'm guessing no, they're fair. going to school it. where you're pastoring. Yeah, well, it's it's similar philosophy, different place, but yeah, it's real similar. Yeah, okay, something where you know yeah. the uh, the curriculum and the output and so forth. You're not yeah, you're not having to wonder what kind of garbage they're getting fed. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Things are getting a little crazy, so it made us rethink everything. Yeah. Yeah. I heard the rumor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a little. Yeah, a lot. Okay, so yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you on that part, and I, and the ratio for private school is a good ratio. You got a great deal. Ten grand for two of them. That's that's amazingly cheap, you know, in today's world. So all of that, the the biggest thing that doesn't fit in this math picture is that Tesla, just to pick on it again. And so you can do what you want. Uh, if I woke up in your shoes, I would be driving a twenty thousand dollar car, not a fifty five thousand dollar car, and um, and my wife would be driving her twenty thousand dollar car, and we'd have a little more money in the bank and we'd be budget iteming these kids. So you're right on track and thank you for your service. And thank you for your hard choice to serve, to serve in the ministry. That's, that's a real call to take an income cut in half or more and to do that. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that's real cool. Open phones at triple eight, eight, two, five, five, two, two, five. Ryan is in Phoenix. Hey Ryan, what's up? Hi Dave. I'm a big fan. And I just finished reading Dr. Malone's book. Um, I got a question about my home. So uh, we have a condo. Uh, we currently owe two hundred eight thousand, mm-hmm. uh, but we're still paying a PMI of one hundred and eighty a month. Good God! Uh, we also to get under the PMI, they say it'll be twenty four thousand seven hundred eleven dollars. Mm-hmm. Um, I have cash on hand of actually thirty three thousand, so I could pay that off. But I also have ninety two thousand in student loans, Mm -hmm. so I didn't know if I should take that cash on hand and apply it directly to student loans, Mm -hmm. or 
pay off the PMI. What's your household now, income? Uh, well, so I just recently lost my job, but it, I'm, I'm applying right now. Once I get my job back, our household income should be anywhere from 140 to 150. Okay. And how long have you been working on uh, this debt situation? Only a month. Oh, um, good. I graduated in May, and a week later I lost my job. So during that time, I went through Financial Peace University with my wife. We got on board with the budget, but we're like, okay, it's really hard to set a budget because I don't Because I'm know unemployed, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So, all right. We, so, remember in Financial out, yeah. Peace University when we talked about we get rid of all debt except Correct. the house in Baby Step Two. Mm-hmm. And the PMI doesn't change that. PMI pisses me Perfect. off. I'm with you. It's bad. Yeah. But and I want you yeah. to get that other twenty four on there as fast as you can. But I want you student loans gone because they're getting ready to come Perfect. back at you guys with these student loans. They're going to return that faucet back on. And they're going to the hammer part, you. Yeah, they're going to hammer you. Yeah, I haven't so. had a payment, so yeah. it felt like nothing. But yeah, yeah okay. But now you enough. do. All but right, I mean, it's, it's getting it's going to it's going to wake you back up, man. In the fall, when it comes when it becomes very apparent that the Biden administration is not able to forgive student loans. So right. um, yeah, yeah. I mean, the Supreme Court has ruled, and it's you know I'm sorry, but so. Uh, Sorry, but not sorry. So the thirty-three thousand. You remember, baby step one's a thousand dollars. Everything else goes towards the debt, yep. and so thirty-two goes on the ninety-two. So now we have sixty left, and we're going to attack the sixty with a vengeance. And when it's gone, we're going to build an emergency fund. And when it's gone, we're going to start putting fifteen percent of our income into retirement and kids' college, mm-hmm. and start paying down on the house. And that's when you'll get rid of the PMI. Perfect. Thank you so much. Hey, thank you. Thanks for being a, a customer in financial peace. Welcome to our crazy gang. Dave, I think what you said is real important, man. If you have not been paying in, in, on student loans. And no one has, by the way, statistically. For three years. One percent have been paying. If you haven't, they are coming back in September. Like a forest fire. They're coming. Make a plan. That might mean you've got to cancel a vacation. That might mean you've got to sell something. That might mean whatever. Listen, you think inflation sucks? What are your student loans kicked back in and you didn't think about it and they catch you off guard? You've got a four-month runway to solve this. Slam your face in the bricks. Guys. So get... Make a plan. Don't, 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 Don't act like this isn't coming. It's coming. Get ready and get rid of your student loans, people. This is The Ramsey Show. Hey, it's Dr. John Deloney. If you love the show and want a deeper dive on your money journey, we have a weekly newsletter that gives you trending and helpful articles and tips on following the Ramsey way. Just go to RamseySolutions.com today to sign up for our newsletter. Again, that's RamseySolutions.com to sign up for our weekly newsletter. From the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Pods Moving and Storage Studios, it's the Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. Open phones here, Dr. John Deloney, Ramsey personality, is my co-host. It's a free call at 888 825 225. Clayton is with us in San Diego to start off this hour. Hi, Clayton. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hey, guys. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. What's up? Uh, so my question today is, is it a smart decision to accept my parents' help to pay off my debt? Um, to give a little backstory, I'm 27 years old, making $85,000 a year. Um, I currently have $30,000 of debt. 25 of that is in credit cards, and five of that is a card note. Um, I just recently had to put in $10,000 of repairs into my car, um, and my parents are offering to help pay for half of that. Um, and I just recently kind of stumbled onto your guys' show and uh, binge-watched it on YouTube, and I have uh, heard that that might not be the best idea going forward. Uh, so just wondering how to figure out how to uh, 
whether so, I should. So your mom and dad are offering you five thousand dollars in assistance as you start walking out of debt. Yes. What strings are attached? Um, well, nothing. I mean, they're they're a great support system. They I haven't relied on them for you know any bills or anything like that for probably ten years now. Um, and you're twenty seven. So since you were seventeen. Uh, since I was about 18, 19, yeah. Okay. Um, I had right. moved out around then and started working. So why now? Uh, I think my my parents just know how stressed I was for, uh, you know, I was working on getting out of debt, and then um, I was I was chipping away at it and then having a $10,000 issue. Um, I, it, this car has been, I've had it for about five years, and I've put about $20,000 into it, so... They know that it's been an absolute headache for me, so I think that they're... Uh, you must be the worst at purchasing car repairs. What uh, in the I, world? You spent $30,000, <laughs> literally? You're not exaggerating, repairing a car. Uh, uh, 20000 20, 20, Oh, including this 10? Uh, no, this, this is, yes, including And what this. in the world? Did you rebuild the whole car? <laughs> I mean, I've had, I've had an air conditioning. I've had like uh, multiple sensor issues and then this recent one was a hybrid battery replacement that was about ninety seven hundred dollars yeah oh you're driving a battery uh, yes yes, a tesla (laughs) no it's uh it's an audi it's an audi but it's an electric vehicle yeah but it's an electric vehicle yes sir oh that e-tron i know (laughs) you're telling me no, you told us, and we're, we're, we're not laughing at you. It's with you, but it's kind of at you. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Ouch. So something is stirring in your soul. My guess is you, you went down a rabbit hole, watched all these videos of the Ramsey Show. You're looking at your financial position. You make 85 grand as a 27-year-old, which, is, which is, means you're crushing it, and you can't breathe. And the more you listen to this show, the more your heart's beating a little bit faster and a little bit faster and a little bit faster. Is that fair? That is absolutely fair. And then your uh, control alt delete doesn't work on your rolling girder or whatever you got in your car there, and now you're in a mess. So the yeah. the car is the car been fixed now already been fixed. The car the car has been fixed. Um, so I I did use this is before I I realized this was an absolute no no. But I did use debt to. Um, pay for the repairs on the car. Um, so I put it on a credit card, which that adds into the 25000 gotcha. okay. Um Yeah. And what is, and what so, is this? What's the Toyota battery worth? The car, I mean. What's it worth? Uh, no, it's not, it, was, it was an Audi. Audi. Audi, I'm sorry. Yes, yeah, like a belly button. Google says it's about uh, 13 and a half. So okay. um, right. we're getting about 13000 I have it on, you know, the different cycles okay. for about fourteen. So but. what is bothering you? about your parents offering you no strings attached they have a good relationship with you you've been living on your own not with any help at all there's no pattern of subsidy what's bothering you about five thousand dollars worth of help i i guess i i guess i just want to know that you know that there is um circumstances that do make it a smart decision um or you know or okay to do where there's Um, where there's not a pattern of you being a parasite it's okay yeah Okay. This is just a gift. It's like a wildly yeah. generous Christmas gift. But yeah. or where there's a pattern of mom and dad now get to help you make all your decisions because they are going to invade your life because they're control freaks because they put some money in. We wouldn't we wouldn't do that one. I didn't hear either one of those things here. Or it becomes an entitlement. You expect this forever. So you've been you've been managing on your own. You made some mistakes, but welcome to life. You're not doing horribly. You're just not doing great. And you had this battery blow up, and they want to give you five k. I take it they have the money. Uh, they do. They're not. You know, they're not rolling, but they're. But they do all right for themselves. They're so not having to borrow the money to give you five k. No, no, okay. they wouldn't. All right. Um, well, I, I wouldn't want to tell. I would tell you to not engage in a pattern for your sake, for your dignity. Right. But this is not a pattern. It's a one off. It's an anomaly. So mm-hmm. if eight months from now they want to do it again, no, no. I think we, you know, we're just. This helps you turn the corner on this new adventure you're on to become debt free. But right. they've they've not been supporting you. You've been supporting yourself for seven, eight, nine years, and uh, and they're not control freaks. I haven't heard a single thing. Now, is, are you going to tell me something in just a minute that I haven't heard yet? <laughs> no, no. Okay. There's nothing. Right. There's nothing hidden or anything like that. Okay. It's just. I think it was just maybe like a, 
uh, a pride thing or not well, wanting that's, that's to. A, hey, that's a good kind of pride that. to ask the question. That's good. So, uh, but you know, uh, uh, my kids do fabulously. They make really good money. They stand on their own. They've done great on their wealth building. And, you know, as part of my estate planning, I may just dump some money over there, but it has nothing to do with them. Uh, you know, it has nothing, I'm not doing that, but I mean, it could, but I'm just saying it has nothing to do with me controlling them. It has nothing to do with them being needy and a parasite living in their mother's basement playing video games. That's not what we're doing. You're, you're a stand-up citizen making 85 k in San Diego, California. You're not rich, but you have a plan, and now you've got a new nuanced plan that gives you some traction. I'm proud of you. Let this be okay. the fire that engages this system so that the next time, and it, it, there will be a next time, yeah. when a car falls apart on you, that, that you don't have to call mom and dad. That you've paid off this debt, you're standing on your own two feet, and the eighty five grand goes. I don't to even it. think you called them; they called you. Yeah, I was. Yeah, I was just kind of, you know. You were whi- you were whining about it, and they said, "Hey, <laughs> yeah, we'll help." Exactly. Yeah. Yes. That's, yes. That's, that's fair. So he, you know, maybe passive aggressive calling. Yeah. But, I mean, he didn't. <laughs> yeah. He didn't yeah. call and beg for money. Yeah. So that's that's cool. Clayton, I like you. I think you're a good guy. I think you're heading the right way, man. Yeah. Accept so. the gift and and make this be a let this be a never again moment. Yeah. I'm going to give you another gift, so accept this one. We want to put you through Financial Peace University and accelerate this process. So mom and dad will throw a little gas on your fire. We'll throw some on your fire. We want you to go through the program the whole nine weeks. If you'll promise to go through it, we'll give it to you free. Hang on. Austin will pick up. Hey, Dr. John Deloney here. I'm a huge fan of both meditation and prayer. And good mental health includes slowing down, gaining control of your thoughts, and plugging into something bigger than you. And Hallow makes it easy to start a daily practice of meditation, prayer, and finding peace. Hallow is the number one Bible app in the world, and you can tailor content towards your faith tradition. From scripture readings and prayers to meditation and journaling, Hallow makes it easy to practice prayer, meditate, and build a deeper, more meaningful spiritual life and rediscover true peace. Go to hallow.com slash Ramsey today to get three months of Hallow for free. That's hallow.com slash Ramsey. Dr. John Deloney, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today. Our team's been doing research on mental health in the workplace. It's not looking good out there, guys. Employees say the last month they felt stressed, burned out, overwhelmed, even angry at work. And if you're a business or HR leader, you may be seeing this firsthand. Your employees can be distracted, exhausted, maybe even quit or ready to quit. Here's the deal. Good leaders take their employees' well-being seriously, and because it's good for both your employees and your business, when they're well, they can bring their full selves to work, and you can help them do that. This is Employee Well-Being Month, and that includes financial wellness. Now, major companies across the U.S., like U-Haul and Costco and many others, are teaching our curriculum to their employees. It's called Smart Dollar when it's done by the HR team, and uh, lots of companies furnish our, our stuff to uh, show people how to become wealthy, get out of debt, get the money piece straightened out. That lowers stress big time. Go to RamseySolutions.com slash employee well-being to check out some free resources. RamseySolutions.com slash employee well-being. Jared is in Salt Lake City. Hey, Jared, welcome to the Ramsey Show. How can we help? Yeah. Hi, hi John. Hi, Dave. How are you doing today? Great, man. What's up? Good. Hey, so I have a, a bit of an odd question. So about a year ago, I was diagnosed with uh, brain cancer. Um, you don't, don't don't feel too bad for me. I, you know, I, I still got my hair. I'm up and walking. 
But the diagnosis comes with about a 10 to 15 year time horizon for uh, for death. I'm 32 and have two kids and a wife. Um, we're in steps four, five, and six as far as the baby steps are concerned. And really, my question is just, so I intend to beat this diagnosis. However, I do want to live with the brutal facts and, and just want to know if there's anything I should change or adjust about the plan that we have laid out to take into account that I may uh, you know, evaporate from, from being the financial provider for my family in a decade. Wow, man. How long ago was the diagnosis? About a year, about a year ago. Man, you process this, uh, and, you know, the tone of your voice and the way you present the story just is incredible courage. You, you sound so strong. I mean, it's, I, I'm, I'm about to cry, but you sound so strong. Jared, have you well, gone robot I'll, I'll mode? No, no. So when I first got this diagnosis, it was a, a lemon-sized tumor in my brain, and they told me I had six months to live. Um, I was lucky that my tumor is about as weird as I am. Uh, and because of that, uh, they found out, no, you don't have six months. The, the structure of the genes in this tumor mean that you've got about 10 to 15 years, not six months. And so I sat in, a, in that first diagnosis for about a month before they got the testing back. And that gives you a lot of time to kind of process yeah. death. And then, you know, you yeah, get so a, you a got like a 10 year gift so. is the way you've been looking at yeah, exactly. it. Exactly. Wow. Wow. Exactly. Good for you, man. How old are your kids? I've got a three-year-old and a one, one-year-old. Yeah. Uh, he was actually born uh, the same month as my uh, my surgery, my craniotomy. Wow. Okay. And so let me go back now that I'm breathing again. What was your question exactly? Yeah. How can you best prepare? You're in baby steps four, five, yeah. and six, yeah. and how can you best prepare? Okay. Yeah. So we're we're anticipating I'm going to live for a really long time, but I have also been given the blessing of knowing that that might not be the case. And how do I change my plan to uh, to adopt that knowledge? Yeah, in a nine and a half year bonus plan. At, at a, yeah, r- yeah, roughly. Yeah. So possibly, probably. Okay. Um, the way I answer questions here is, what would I do if I woke up in your shoes? I can't imagine. Because I've never been there. Um, the first thing uh, I have done years ago, and I would do over and over every morning, and I have done every over and every morning, is just make sure I'm spiritually in order. That yeah. um, I, I've got my spiritual house in order, and and that's inside of me, and that's between me and God. And um, in my case, uh, I'm a Jesus follower, and so that becomes a huge, huge deal in these scenarios. Now. Once I've got that going, then for me, then the second thing I'm going to be worried about is relationships and make sure I'm not, like John said, in robot mode or in freak out mode or in I'm not doing more damage um, than, uh, you know, uh, than good, you know, with this diagnosis. And so, um, you know, it's the, uh, uh, yeah, and the third thing I'm going to do is go write a bull named Fu Manchu. I mean, I'm going to do a bunch of stuff, right? And so, uh, uh, which I do. I, I've always done that. I jumped out of an airplane, made John Deloney do it with me last year. So, um, you know, you, you might as well, you know, and why not? And, uh, and and then the fourth thing I'm going to do is a question you're asking. So is the financial, and I've already done all of that now also, so I can speak that what I would do is what I've done. A detailed will, and I'm going to uh, mm-hmm. write letters to go with that will for weddings and for births of grandchildren that I might not be there for. And I'm going to have uh, a lot of discussions with uh, everybody that's around uh, as to exactly how I want this financial thing to go down. And it's all going to be written out in a detailed will, exactly how I want the money handled for the good of my family. Right. And by the way, that's what I have. I have a ridiculously complicated and detailed estate plan. But that's one way I say I love you to my family. And that's what you're asking. So I want you to make sure that that's done. And if you spend a little money on that, it gives her peace of mind. It gives you peace of mind. One less thing to think about as we deal with really important things. And money's not on that list, right? So right, uh, right. then as far as the rest of it goes is I'm going to live like I'm going to live. And so I'm going to keep working four, five, and six. Simple. Cool. You know, keep working four, five, and six. Get, uh, you know, keep putting money away for retirement. She can use that if you don't make it. 
You can use it if you do make it. Uh, I'm going to put, keep putting money away baby step five for kids' college. They're going to need that. Uh, baby step six, I'm going to get the house paid off. The closer I get net paid off, the better off I'm going to be if I stay and better off she's going to be if I don't, and so on, right? And so, you know, you get you get real tactical and re- real detail. But these this plan works uh, whether, you, whether you're here 10 years or whether you're here 40 years. So it's the best one I got, and I would just keep working it exactly that way. You may have a different level of intensity, and you may have a different level going to enjoyment, uh, enjoying some moments here and there of money that other people might not. Uh, but none of that's bad. That, that's all part of the ride and, and the thing that you're on. Um, John, what am I missing? I think just making it tactile. So when Dave talks about relationships, I want you to get two or three men that will commit to having coffee or breakfast or whatever for you, with you for the next 10 years. Like, y'all are going to be my gang, and those are going to be the guys that you text on those random nights that you can't sleep and you're spinning at 3 a.m., and those are the guys that are going to show up and make sure if you, if you, if you, know, if you have a bad day, they're going to be those guys that show up. But you're going to want to spend every spare second doing these things that you quote-unquote think you need to do, and one of the things that's going to be a great gift to your kids is seeing their old man have friends, seeing their dad have friends, seeing their dad have commitments, um, cause let's play this out. Let's say worst case scenario, you got 10 years, then you got a 13 year old and 11 year old who got a ringside seat of watching dad be courageous, be brave and have friends and invite men over into his life. Right. So that's relationships, making sure you and your wife are, are together. Um, and this comes from Brene Brown. I, I just think the way she says it is so, is so poignant. Be weary of dress rehearsing tragedy. You think you can plan for the back end of this and you really of the emotional back end of this, you can't. You can't, right. right? And so... You can't rehearse it, but you can prepare by laying foundations. That's right. So what Dave said about financial, about relationship, all that is exactly right. And then go live your best life with those kids. Uh, uh, man. Hey, Jared. Go live it. Before we go into this commercial, promise me that yeah. you or your wife, one, will call us back and let us know how you're doing. Oh, Yeah. Yeah, we'll, I want to we'll keep. I want to keep and, up with you, and I want to know your story, and I want to know if we can help her and or you. Yeah, yeah, I'll let you know, and and I'll I'll tell you, Dave. Um, God's kind of been sitting on my heart with this whole thing, and I, I want to let your your audience know we we got a life insurance policy about a month before we got the diagnosis, before any wow, go, notice baby. or knowledge that there was anything going on. You know, I felt fine, but on my heart, I felt, hey, I need to get this set up. So, so it's it's. You know, that much. As well, uh, that that's one big serious man. Wow, way to go, way to go. Well, you've all played the telephone game. The first person whispers a message to the second person who whispers it to the third and so on around the table until the original message has completely changed. Multiply that confusion by a hundred if you run a business with different software systems that don't talk to each other. That's why there's NetSuite by Oracle. In the early days of Ramsey, we were using different systems for all of our business units. We needed one single source for accurate data. NetSuite was the software we used to optimize and take us to the next level. NetSuite gave us the visibility into all of our numbers so that we could communicate across departments and plan ahead better. And as we grew, it scaled with us. NetSuite worked for Ramsey, and it will make a difference for your business too. Join the more than 34,000 customers who trust NetSuite to help make them smarter and make better decisions and level up their operations. To learn more, get a free product tour at netsuite.com slash Ramsey. That's netsuite.com slash Ramsey.
Thank you for joining us, America. Dr. John Deloney, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. Kenny's in Portland, Maine. Hi, Kenny. How are you? I'm doing well, uh, Dave and John. Uh, quick question for you. Um, baby step two, should I cancel or stop contributing to my HSA? Yes. Okay. The reason is, is that you have a $1,000 emergency fund. You already have money in the HSA. How much do you have in there now? Well, I keep it minimal. I just I keep spending it as soon as I get it just to keep to keep paying on the on the on the medical bills. Oh. Okay. If you're using it back out for medical bills, we'll use it as a method for paying them and let the government pay a third of your medical bills because it's tax deductible money going in and then you pay the medical bill with it. If you can do that, yeah. Yeah, we'll cycle it through there, but as far as building up a big chunk of savings in an HSA while you're working Baby Step 2, I would not. No, I usually dwindle it right down as soon as I, as soon as I get money in it so I can just get a bit of back. Uh, well, by dwindling it down, you're paying bills you would have paid otherwise with tax-deductible money. So that's, that's going to be smart by 30 cents on the dollar, 25 cents on the dollar. Okay. So my next question to you is if I'm putting $200 a paycheck period to get my medical bills paid off faster, should I increase that? contribution if, if that's where you are in the baby steps the are the medical okay. bills in the baby where you are in the debt snowball yes so they're they're at the top of the debt snowball right now yeah they're one of the top ones yeah, I yeah got chunk about, as I much as you can put 3, in there and run it back through that okay. account because it's just a method of paying so in other words if you put a thousand dollars in there you do not pay taxes on that one thousand dollars and you use that tax-free money to pay your medical bill with that saves you about 250 bucks per thousand okay in taxes so you're because you're running it through there but all we're doing is using this as a method of clearing the debt snowball okay not as a method of building up savings Awesome. I appreciate your time. So well done. Good, good move. Excellent. Excellent. I'll tell you another place that applies folks out there is um, if you've got a chronic situation um, where, where there's a ongoing allergies, there's ongoing Crohn's disease, there's ongoing whatever, where you've got these constant medical bills that are part of your budget, then run those through your HSA. If you've got an HSA, because you can pay medical bills out of HSA tax free. And so, you know, you are going to dump money in there. But if you're just using your HSA like I have, George W. put this in place back in the day. And um, that's when it came into being was under the George W. Bush administration. I started putting as much money as was allowed into an HSA at that point. Knock on wood, the Ramsey family has been pretty healthy and we pretty much we have cash flowed any medical that was out of pocket. So I've never touched my HSA. And it's now in mutual funds, and it's hundreds of thousands of dollars because I've been doing it for decades now. So it's became another investment vehicle is what it amounted to. But I don't suggest that kind of thing while you're in baby step two. Baby step two is bill pay time. We're paying bills. We're clearing debt, all that kind of junk. John's in Ventura, California. Hi, John. How are you? Uh, honored to speak to you and your listeners. Thank you. How are you guys? Better than we deserve, sir. How can we help? Yeah, so it's been quite a year. Last August, I got married to the love of my life, and a week after we came back from the honeymoon, my dad fell in his, in his assisted living home and broke his hip, and that led to a series of declining health events for him, and then he passed away I'm a month sorry. later. I'm sorry. Yeah, he spent 25 years in assisted living after suffering a stroke when I was 13, and his sister, my aunt, was his conservator. She did an amazing job with the conservatorship and the guardianship. And when my grandpa was alive, he had set up a medical needs trust for my dad, and that trust grew to $175,000. This trust was never used. It was supposed to be a medical needs trust for any additional things my dad needed. And my aunt informed me I'm the beneficiary of the entire trust. So fast forward, my wife and I got a check for $150,000 this week, and we're getting the other twenty five, dollars maybe in about a month when she finishes up the final accounting, just some of the little... um, you know, things with closing up the conservatorship. So my question to you guys, you know, at this stage, my wife and I are in baby step three, B and four, would you use all of this as a down payment or should we set some of this aside for our investments? We're just, we're a little lost uh, as to what to do with this amount of money. Yeah. So this comes through as an estate, as an inherited item. It's not taxable, correct? Have you looked into that? That's what, 
that's what my accountant told me. Okay. And my dad was my dad was in Oregon, and I'm in California. And my accountant said that it's an inherited trust. It was a third party trust. My grandpa had. It's not. It's not. A, it's not a matter of which state he's in because it's not a state issue. It's a federal issue as to whether oh, you okay. be taxed. Yeah. So I, I I don't think you're taxed at all. I th- I think I agree with your accountant, but your accountant's probably smarter yeah. than I am on this subject. So um, uh, I'll I'll go with him. So no taxes have to be withheld. So you're going to clear one seven five. Wow, what a story. Yeah. And you're thinking about buying a house. How much of a house are we going to buy in Ventura, California? Well, we're actually more like outside of L.A. Um, my wife and I have about 100000 already saved up in cash. So you got um, two seventy five. How much are you going to spend on a house? Probably, I you know, for our first property, 600 to 700 like a condo or something, because mm-hmm. homes are like yeah. 850 and that will put us over the 15-year fix yeah. that you recommend. What's your household income? About two twenty. Okay. Two hundred two hundred twenty thousand. Right. Yeah. Well, I'm going to make sure I have an emergency fund in place and no debt. Do you already yep. have that? Not counting this. Yeah, we're totally debt free. You yeah. have an emergency fund. Yeah, we've set aside about thirty k. Okay. All right. Now I'm putting the whole thing down on the house. Hundred percent. Wow. All of it. Two seventy five. Okay. Yeah. And let's reverse okay. engineer so that you understand how quickly I can make that decision after doing this all these years. Number one, I've answered the question 2,000 times. But um, uh. number two, uh, if you had a condo that was worth 600 and you owed uh, 300 on it, would you go borrow another 100 to put it into investments? No, for sure not. Well, it's the yeah. same thing by not putting that 100 down and instead putting it into investments. If you didn't put the whole thing down and you put some of it into investments, it has the same net effect as if you borrowed on the condo because you effectually are. You're borrowing more on the condo by not putting it down. And, and put it, so you're borrowing money on your condo to put it into investments, and I wouldn't do that. That's silly. So no, no, no. We're going to get the condo down, and then we're going to get it paid off, and you got a great household income. And, man, what a year you all have been through. Ups and downs and crazy up, yep. you know, up, we get married, down, dad falls, dad passes away, up, we get 175, man, lots of roller coaster here. So, John, I'm going to ask Dave a question on, that I have about your situation, but I want to ask his expertise, okay? Sure. So, Dave, there's something in my guts that would want to sit down and at least put something on the table, make some sort of gift or a, a, something of appreciation to my aunt. Mm. who's done yeah. such an amazing job. Is that... Was she paid? Yes, um, she was. Okay. And, um, yes, yeah, but she... You're right. I mean, she did an amazing job, and my parents were actually divorcing when my dad had the stroke, and as a result, it led to a lot of years of... I just didn't get to know my aunt very well. I had a great relationship with my dad, um, and now I've been getting to know my aunt, and it's been awesome. We've, we've come together through this, and been, I've been able to get to know her. She's met my wife. It's really if she, our if she was paid very, very well, then I would buy a nice token gift. If she yeah. wasn't paid very, very well, I would write a nice check. I'm with John. I like that. I really like that idea. That's yeah. just a relationship thing. That's just a me doing something that makes me like me. Right. Or it's one of those moments, like Dave and I take so many calls on this exact situation that goes horribly awry, and there's cousins fighting cousins, suing each other. And you had one gangster sister, aunt, who yeah. said, not on my watch. And yeah. because and, of her diligence. She, and, and and a grandpa. And a grandpa, that's and right. And dad. Well, uh, yeah, I, I mean, dad's sister. Everybody, dad sister. all the players in this are positive on your this dad's side. This just never happens in our world, man. It's just so amazing. Um, but I, yeah. I, 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 I would feel in my spirit, I want to do something nice. And that, that can that could be a thousand bucks. Who knows what that is? There's not a number on yeah, that. She but. wants to go on a nice cruise and it's 5K, yeah. write a that's check. You know, something like that. I'd do that for sure. I'm with John. That's a good thought, John. Man, Very that's good. special. Good for you, brother. Yeah, that's it's it's unusual, and so it's super special. Yeah, it's good people doing good things and taking care of their family. Wow. This is The Ramsey Show.
our scripture today, Proverbs 15, 16. Better is a little with the fear of the Lord than great treasure and trouble with it. Dr. Jordan Peterson says, perhaps you are overvaluing what you don't have and undervaluing what you do. Well, perhaps contentment is a good thing. I agree with the good doctor. Perhaps. Perhaps. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Ashley is with us. Ashley is in St. Louis. Hi, Ashley. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hey, Dave. Thank you for taking my call. I feel so blessed, and I'm sure I'm making my stepdad jealous right now. He's obsessed (laughs) with you. Well, we're honored. How can we help? Well, Dave, I've gotten myself in a pickle, and I need to figure out if I should trade in my car and basically get a junker. Tell us more. Well, Sounds ominous. I shouldn't have. It is kind of What'd ominous. What'd you do? What kind of car I, did you overbuy? What'd you do, Richard? Uh, yeah. Um, I shouldn't have done it, but back in November, I traded in my Honda Accord, and I got a Subaru Ascent. And yeah. that means what? You got rid that of a car. You got rid of a car I, that was worth what, and you bought a car that you owe how much on? Yeah. <laughs> so the car that I had was I only owed seventy five hundred on, and I traded it in for a car to owe twenty two thousand. Did, okay. you roll, did you roll that 75 on top of that? No, so, yeah, 75. No, they, no. she had equity in it. Okay. The, uh, I guess, you, you owed, the car was worth more yeah. than 7,500 that you traded, right? Yes. Okay. And so what do you make a year? I make about 42000 Okay. Well, $22,000 car doesn't fit that, does it? No, it sure doesn't. So what are you going to do? Well, I've been contemplating the idea of trading in for something much less. The problem is reliability versus... Honey, a $7,500 Accord will go to the moon and back. So will a Corolla and a Camry. You had a really reliable car. I did. I mean, that's a Jesus card and car, and they were all in one Accord. I mean, yeah. I mean, seriously. Yes, I messed up. Yeah. Hey, but it happens. Hey, why are you still beating yourself up so yeah. much? Well, she hasn't got rid of the car yet, so oh, we got to okay. qu- we got to keep beating ourselves up till we get rid of the car. So, and the car is real nice, huh? Yeah, that Subaru is nice, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. Well, it didn't bring you as much joy as it brought pain. you pain. How has it been yeah. a pain? Well, honestly, yeah. Uh, the transmission went out within the first two weeks of owning it. Well, that was under warranty. I hope. It was covered under a recall. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So that was lucky. So it was a pain, but it didn't cost a lot of money. So, so what's wrong with selling it and getting a seventy five hundred dollars Civic or Ron Cord? I am just having a really hard time finding anything reliable. It's you just drove me and my a seventy five hundred dollar car that was reliable. This is I mythology. Did. Yep. You can find a $7,500, you can undo this, and you'll lose some money, but get back to close to where mm-hmm. you were, and have a reliable okay. car. That I'm telling you, a $10,000, $7,500 Accord, it, that car's good. They'll, they'll drive 500,000 miles. I mean, they you can't kill them. Yeah. It's just finding that again is my issue right now because I really yeah well you, it would require looking. <laughs> oh, I've been looking. Oh. <laughs> I'm obsessed. No, you're not. <laughs> it, well, is, is there not a car that Carvana won't just drop off at your front door? Well, the Carvana ones you can't seem to really find a deal. And there we go. Mm-hmm. See, mm-hmm. you're gonna have so an excuse for anything we put on the table. So, so you, actually, you do whatever you want to do, kiddo. If I woke up in your shoes, I would say, last November, my brain wasn't functioning, and today my brain is functioning, and I'm going to undo the stupid that I did and go back to the last time that my life made sense and restart. And both 
Dave and I have had that exact conversation with ourselves multiple times. Probably this week, but yeah, Pro- it's, yeah, it's only Monday. A it's only Monday, but yeah, been there twice. Yeah, and so it's just you—you you have to go back to the last time things made sense. So the psalmist says, "The earth." Or the psalmist says, "The blessings of the Lord have no sorrow added to them." So as a person of faith, I can tell you, God did not give you that car. And the way I know that is there was sorrow added to it. Ding, ding. Exit the devil car. Get the Jesus car. (laughs) Oh, geez. There you go, Reddit. There's some fodder. Well, it was a joke. We're having a slow Reddit day. You're going to be trending on Twitter. I can tell you that sometimes as a person of faith, you think you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, what God's telling you to do, and you find out later it was last night's pizza, not the Holy Spirit. And you look back and you go, the blessings of the Lord have no sorrow added to them, and there's sorrow added to this, so apparently I missed that one. I can't, I mean, like how many bazillion times in 62 years I've done that? A bunch. But I can go right back to the last time there was peace and go, I'm going back to the Accord. It's the, it's like it's like when you're playing a video game and you die and you go back to the start of the other level. Just go back there. Start there. That so, was, that except was, you don't have to die. That was, <laughs> I mean, that. the part of her that thought this was a good idea, that probably needs to be done. And then she can go back. She can go back. It's just like Get out of your die. Yeah. Out of your devil car. <laughs> this guy. <laughs> Actually, you got the worst possible series of answers on this call of anybody the in the last twenty the years car. on this show. Sell the car. We got the devil car, the death in the video game. All of it's lumped into one bad call. So I'm just saying. This is this Kyle. Is... Get us the Lord out of this call. How can we help Kyle in San Diego? Right quick before we run out of time. Oh, awesome, Dave. Thank you so much for taking my call. I'm a huge fan of you as a leader in finance and a spiritual leader as well. So You're, you're very be kind. Before we run out of time, what's your question? Yeah, so I live in San Diego, and um, I have a two-year-old daughter and my wife. We live in a very small, 1,000-square-foot uh, condo here in San Diego. And uh, we bought it about six years ago, um, and we bought it for like 250 It's currently what? valued at like 530 What's your question, um, Kyle? And, well, my question is, should we leave California yes. with my wife being pregnant and we have another baby on the way? We're considering if we should, we, we need a bigger Your, your motivation for leaving right? is what? Well, To get a more, more inexpensive a housing. House you live in a very house, expensive like, area and you want a better, you want a less expensive housing market. Yeah, but Why the would problem, you? this is where it gets complicated is when I tell my wife, hey, we need to move. We have $300,000 equity in Frankly, we can come up with another fifty grand and just buy a house three fifty cash somewhere else. Yeah. But my wife says, "Well, my family is here. I love my family, and I can't leave them." And her family actually said, "Well, no, if you guys stay here, we'll give you guys seventy five to a hundred thousand dollars to help you buy a house." The problem is, houses here cost nine hundred thousand dollars. So even with a hundred thousand dollars cash on top of our three hundred equity. Hey, it's brother, still just completely price. Kyle, this out. is not a, a a house question yet. This is a marriage question. This is about a guy who's looking at a house as an investment vehicle and a wife who wants to create a home around her family. And that this is a conversation to be solved over breakfast first. Well, take, not, your, take your father-in-law to breakfast and get them to move with you. Yeah. <laughs> this isn't a math problem just yet. This is a young married couple trying to see which is the best path. And she has a different vision of what this looks like. You have a different picture of what this looks like. And you all need to align those pictures, man. Personal finance is personal in the sense that it affects your family. And so where you live in conjunction with your wife and her family does matter. That's a valid part of the equation. Now, how to make that affordable in San Diego? That's hard math right there. That's tough. Hey, thank you for calling. I wish we had a magic answer for you, but we don't. That puts us our The Ramsey Show in the books. We'll be back with you before you know it. In the meantime, remember, there's ultimately only one way to financial peace, and that's to walk daily with the Prince of Peace, Christ Jesus. Hey, it's Dr. John Deloney. If you like what you heard in this episode and want to know more about getting started on the Ramsey Baby Steps, go to RamseySolutions.com and click on the Get Started button. We'll help you figure out the best next step for you based on your specific situation. That's RamseySolutions.com and click Get Started.